Hi guys, welcome back to LR Live. In today's episode, we're back in not quite so sunny Norfolk. A um, little bit of drizzle, but uh, needless to say, we're gonna crack on and get the soft top fitted onto Simon's 90. We have cheated just a little bit, I'm afraid. That's allowed. So we've got to fit new tabs to the side of the vehicle now to uh, hold the canvas rope down. Um, if you like, what I'll do is I'll just measure these for you. And at least if you're doing this on a conversion that doesn't have those in place already, you'll know where they go. 205 mil is the first rivet middle from the back of the truck. Okay, 205. Then the distance between uh, this one and this one, centre to centre, and I presume it's the same on that one, yeah. Uh, we've just offered up the header rail, which goes in there. Now this is a TD5, so we needed a TD5 specific header rail. And on it, it's already got the holes in position and they line up perfectly with the holes on the actual header rail itself that we've just offered up. So that's nice, there's no drilling required there. Uh, we're then also gonna have some uh, horseshoe mounts here. Now it's okay on this side, we can fit that no problem, but on the driver's side where you've got all this gubbins, um, we're probably gonna have to sit it lower. So we're gonna decide now, or Simon's gonna decide whether he wants them both low, so they sort of look even, or one high and one low. We'll decide on that in a minute. And then the last two pieces we do to the bodywork, we've got two galvanized retaining plates here with a bar on them, uh, and that will hold the front rope. It all makes sense when we get it together, but just letting you know now what we're gonna be fitting. We've painted all the tabs already, and they come in raw aluminium and they're not drilled through either because the ones that are drilled through from Land Rover are about eight pounds each. Uh, and the ones we bought were about two pound each because they're just plain. They're designed to be spot welded on, um, but that does mean we've got to drill the holes ourselves. Right, just a little tip. If you've got an old uh, fizzy pot bottle, like a two litre Coke bottle, yeah, take the lid off, slide the cap over the top okay because then if you do push through by accident you're not going to be hitting the body with the end of your drill it'll hit the plastic cap so you can see these are the tabs that hold the rope against the body these are the slightly cheaper ones um, they're aluminium and they don't come drilled so we've drilled them through before painting them which is the right thing to do i think uh, because you get proper paint coverage trouble is the holes are in the wrong place unfortunately um, so we are going to put one rivet in to hold it in place and then drill the second hole and rivet it but that should be all good. Um, I was just saying to Simon, with my experience with rivet guns, on the third clamp, pull it away from you, that's it. When you can feel it biting, pull it away, otherwise there's a good chance it'll smash back onto the bodywork. If I just spin this round, Simon, just to show the, yeah. the viewers. So we've put some double-sided uh, adhesive padding on there. So the first reason for that is to stop water ingress from underneath the bar, but also we can hold it in place. So when it's laid down, now I said before, all the holes, look, let's go this way, are lining up. So you do need some sort of weather protection underneath this rail. So we've used um, a foam strip front and back. It only had four captive bolts, so we've only put four back. You have got six holes, but you don't need all six. And this actually doesn't move. So once it's in place, it stays in place. It doesn't clamp uh, the canvas like the older version. Okay guys, so we're gonna mount these uh, retaining plates now. And uh, these, when they came, they weren't quite big enough. The aperture there below the bar wasn't big enough to get the piece of rope in, it was too tight. So we did actually have to splay those out on, the, uh, on a vise. Although we've marked the two holes, you'd be better off putting it on with one rivet and then using the hole in the plate to, to pilot it. We drew out that cap. Bloody right, mate. <laughs> well, the bit is. Just in time. Yeah. It's all packaged really well. Just be careful when you're opening it up with a knife, you don't go too deep and score your uh, newly painted bars, but it's looking good. This is the Exmoor trim frame set. It's a heavy duty frame set. And somewhere in the package we did get, we've got some extra bars here. These are our channels, which I'm hoping are gonna be black as well. We did order them in black. Cause you can get them galved 
all painted. And there's our big bag of nuts and bolts. So, oh, they give you, can give you the clips look, so you didn't need to order them. So you get these uh, channel clips now, they're always quite hard to order, but they come in the set. That's awesome. So the two bar hoop is the one that goes at the front. And you can just see here, this is for the channel. Uh, and that will attach the channels above the door. You've got your seat belt position here and you've got your brackets at the top to connect everything up. And we haven't opted for additional seat bait bracket mounts on the rear hoop for forward facing seats because it's got inward facing benches on this one. The trick with these bars uh, when you're doing the fit is you don't do anything up tight, you do it all loose. Otherwise you're just getting yourself in a heap of trouble because obviously there's a bit of distortion even though these are made on a jig you're gonna get some distortion. So, Simon's done his one up at the front there. Are you gonna do it up a bit tighter, yeah? I can do. Just do it up a little bit tighter than that, not super tight, but I need to then move mine without lifting it out of place. Keep going. Yeah, we're about there. Right, there you go, you're on now. Yeah. So that means we've done, we've got two in. Yeah. All right. That one's smart. That goes in as well? Yes. Oh, yeah. nice. Result. Okay. Um, on the rear here, I don't know if you can see this, but it's not lining up. Now there's not enough movement. Sometimes you could get like a center punch um, in there to wriggle it and, and manipulate that over a bit, but that's just gonna be too much to move over. So we're gonna have to redrill that. Now, obviously we're gonna just paint a little bit of uh, paint in there just to protect it. Cause we've just now gone through that eco and also the paint on the truck. So we'll put a bit of paint in there before we put the bolt in. We'll tighten all four of these up tight and that means we've got one point to work off and then everything else can be adjusted from this point onwards and backwards. So that's the way to do it. So don't have it all super loose. You just have to have one solid piece in the middle and then work loosely from the back. So we've got the rear hoop now. So if you want to try and can you get a bolt in there? Is it yeah. lined up all right? Okay, so there's, because this is just a single bar, there is more movement with that, so you can sp splay it out a little bit. So we've both managed to get these in. Now, I think actually before we do that, sorry, we should just tighten these up a little bit. Right. Just get these uh, tightened up a touch. Not fully, but you know, so we don't get too much movement when you're drilling. And I know you guys said in the last video, you wanted to see more of Simon's hands <laughs> doing up nuts and bolts. So this is for all you fans out there. Put a deep socket underneath. There you go, and then just finish it. Yeah, so it's not it's not bonkers, is no. it? Yeah. So we've still got some movement there. That's good. And same on that side. So the reason we don't over tighten these is because if you need to make the distance between these two bigger, um, you can move the bar without bending the plate, which you don't want to do. So these pieces are handed, uh, and then that center piece there needs to be at an angle to inwards so that you can fit your center bar. So once again, no instructions, I'm afraid, but there probably are instructions somewhere, but you don't need them now because you've got our video. Um, this super thick washer here, you get eight of these and that is because they sit sandwiched in this point here so that when you actually clamp it up, it doesn't over clamp and crack the paint. But on the central bar, um, it is slotted up and down. So when you've got your bolts in place, you want to just have this on its highest setting. So you need to pull, best thing to do is stand in the back of the truck, one of you, uh, lift this up as high as you can and then bolt it up because you want that to be relatively high in the center there of the canvas. You can always lower it down later, um, but that gives you the best chance of getting it nice and tight when you first fit it. These are the rear channels and they sit here. Um, now what you have to do is you actually have to get the bolt inside to actually connect to there. So rather than try and push the bolt from the back here and put the nut on the inside because it's very narrow, the easier way is to actually put the bolt through here first, then offer it into position and then we'll do it up. And you'll see what I mean when I do that in just a second. Right, so have you got the rear channel lined up yeah. now? Are you happy with that position? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can see here, we've lined up there all the way up. So that's a, a good gap. That sits on top of the header rail, so it doesn't go underneath, as we thought. And then moving backwards, we've got 
this. Now you do have to have a little gap in here for the canvas to sit in. So you might have to open these up ever so slightly so you can get your canvas in there. All running down nicely. That'll keep it off the body. And we've got our tie just underneath. So we're just gonna push these plastic pieces in now. So they go in from the outside. So these clips come with the kit. We did actually buy some separately, but they come with the kit now. And you push those in like this. You might need a little rubber. Have you got a plastic hammer? Oh no, you don't need them. Right. I think the original ones you do, because they're a really tight fit. It's good that you've got some spares though, because these do break really easily. No. So what we're gonna do now, we'll grab the canvas, we'll load it onto the front of the vehicle, then just tuck the front edge in first before we drag it over the sides. Right, so we're just readjusting things. Now, on this TD5, there's no slots in this header rail. So what we've had to do is rotate this so it goes underneath the sun visor and clips here. We've done it up fairly tight, but it can move. And what's gonna happen is now, Oh, push push those push those buckles through the holes. Oh yeah, I'll see the holes there. You have to tension this enough to be able to hook it on top of that, and you can already sure. see yeah. it's barely going to fit. Although these are a little bit slack, when the hood shrinks, which it will do very quickly in this weather, I can always feel, already feel it getting tighter. Um, these will get tight as well. Everything will get tight, so don't over over tighten everything. Just make sure it is tight as much as you can. I think that's probably about as tight as you're going to get it anyway but it'll pull itself together and we'll come back in a few days, weeks maybe, or Simon can send us a video, just show us how tight it's gone and we'll go from there. We're gonna get these tied off first and then we'll put the canvas in place. So let's do that. So filming that in the rain wasn't the best experience, but we did manage to get it on and it looked really good at the end. And you'll see here a couple of details that I didn't get a chance to mention in the video. And the first one is, uh, just tucking the canvas into those door channels, obviously at the top and uh, behind the uh, B pillar. Now, at the back of the uh, canvas itself, when you flap that down, it needs to tuck into those side panels, you can see there. And obviously on this vehicle, we had to tension that canvas at the back, but unfortunately I'd forgotten to order the additional three tabs we needed for the swing away uh, door and they hook on the rope. So what we actually used was bungees. Uh, we bungeed uh, the rope and we ran it down to the rear uh, bumper just to keep tension on it because what's really, really important about these canvases is you do keep them tight for at least a week, if not two weeks, if you can. Now, if you're um, in a hot climate or you know the weather's really good where you are, you are gonna have to soak that hood at least two or three times um, and let it dry out. And the purpose of that is obviously to let it shrink because that canvas will absorb water and all the fibers will shrink um, in the heat and the wet and the heat and the wet. So you might have to artificially create that. We didn't because it was pouring with rain and we had a heat wave the next couple of days later. So I know um, that that canvas is gonna look just right. Although Simon did ring me literally two days later and said, oh, it's been raining loads. Can I now roll the canvas up? Because it's had loads of water on it. And I had to tell him, no, you can't do that. You've got to let it dry out get wet, dry out, get wet. And then if you do that and you keep it all tight and let it settle, you'll have a good canvas for a very long time. So um, I will try and get some pictures from Simon and also another video when I go down there, just to show you how it looked after it settled down and everything. Cause obviously we couldn't get too many wide shots of that truck, but it's definitely um, a conversion I would 100% recommend. The weird thing about those soft tops is uh, when you compare them to a hard top 90, they're a lot quieter because you haven't got those big panels uh, reverberating. You get far less condensation as well on the inside of those panels. And you can also fit a fume curtain uh, behind over the bulkhead behind you. And that's good because in the winter, it makes the cab much smaller to heat. So there are a lot of benefits. Obviously you've got security. They're nowhere near as secure as a hard top. But if that's not an issue for you guys, um, a soft top is a very good option. So I'll leave it with you. Thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please do subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I will see you on the next one.